John Friedman. Hey. Thanks so much. Hey. Tell me about the show you created um, about rejection. Uh, it's called The Rejection Show. Uh, the simple explanation is that it features the rejected and turned down material of comedians and writers and artists, any kind of creative types. So I could have a shot at it. Yes, <laughs> definitely. It's a variety show of rejection and rejected material. Let's talk about failure. Sure. Because that's something I can really relate to. Me too. Um, how do you move past it? Uh, you just move past it. Because, I mean, like, I feel sometimes like my creative juices just come out as flop sweat and premature ejaculations. Mm -hmm. you, you know what I mean? I think so. So, okay, so you just moved past it. Yeah. So when you wrote a lot of these jokes, the rejected jokes, you were on the clock at Jimmy Fallon. Right, right. So, in a sense, um, like, you're stealing material owned by him. Well, not you? really, because I wasn't a writer. I was a blogger. But we were invited to contribute jokes to the monologue. So and which you then would... stole. Well, I wrote them. They're mine. Well. Okay, so you don't have to worry about him suing you. Really. I don't think so. So that has to really sting. I mean, not only having your jokes rejected, but then breaking the law to tell them. I wouldn't say sting is the right word. Most of my guests tell me that their appearance on my show has changed their lives. How do you think this episode is going to change your life when it comes out? I imagine people will start swarming out in front. Because now they know where I live. You might have to look into security. Like, Actually, I, I want them to show up. You probably feel like you've made it now that you're on Itasa. Excuse me? It, Itasa, inside, inside the actor's studio apartment. Oh, that's you. Yeah. That's you guys. Okay. Uh, yeah. In um, a way. How would you describe this peak? Uh, it's pretty awesome because uh, I didn't have to go anywhere. If you could be Sir Richard Branson or Chris Angel Mind Freak, who would you choose to be? Interesting you bring him up. Um, he went to my high school. Same. He graduated Richard from Richard Branson? Same. No. Um, the Mind Freak. Chris Angel. Did you guys make fun of him in high school? Like, yeah, he's older mind than freak, I am. Mind I wasn't freak. there when he was there. Oh. He's older than I am. Okay. Or was he? If you had to pick one rejection out of all the rejections you've had, what would you pick as the worst? Being turned down by a woman I'm into. Mm -hmm. That kind of heartbreak is the worst. How did it make you feel? Like a failure. Like I should be more of an asshole. That's what women thank you. There you go. Okay, John, uh, Jim was wondering if he could have a tour of your apartment. For sure. Yeah? Here it is. Always have Woodford Reserve on reserve. It's Big Poppy hot sauce, but autographed by Big Poppy. He was a guest on Fallon and I I got him to autograph the big poppy sauce. I have a Keurig here. Um, there's something wrong with it. It's extremely loud. Do you guys want to hear? Sure. It's very loud. So you don't make much coffee at like 3.30 in the morning? Or no. The morning. Who would you rather be, Kathy Lee or Hoda? Oh, that's tough. It's very tough. I guess I can't choose. How am I supposed to choose? I don't know. I it's an impossible. Is this where the magic happens? Yeah, you mean sleeping? It's a small little room. I like having a small room for some reason. Mm -hmm. The it's ladies, the it's ladies like, like right? it. The ladies, ladies. Okay. The thing I got as a gift. It's called a begegler. Begegler. You put the you put egg in there, and uh -huh. I, you like you know whip it up. And I think you microwave it, and then it it fits right onto a bagel. There's my little workstation here. Mm -hmm. I, like, I use index cards a lot for my for jokes and stuff. Can you give me an example? Can't of, touch this. Give me a joke with can't touch this. Can't touch this was. Um, I'll tell you the real story behind the joke. Is that uh, when that album came out in 1990, uh, my parents wouldn't let me get it. They wouldn't let me get that album. And I 
was like, why, why not? And basically my dad said, because he's singing about his penis. But then thinking about it now as, as an adult, I'm like, yeah, but he's saying you can't touch it. It's a positive message. Anyway. Right. Um, <laughs> what is you shouldn't touch this? You shouldn't touch this. Yeah, you can't touch blind this. If you touch but this. he's not he's not singing about his penis. He's clearly not singing about his can't penis. Touch this. <laughs> Why would anyone do that? <laughs> can't touch this. Kids. <laughs>